Welcome to Kaiju Mathematics. Today I wanted to give you a tour of my Kaiju Mathematics bookshelf. Before I start going through this, I do want to just point out that this is about half of my books uh, that I own math-wise. My other half is at school on my bookshelf there, so I'll have to bring all those books home sometime and start filling up some space here on this one. But let's start at the top. So here I have this Godzilla collectible, collector's edition, Blu-ray sleeve book. So what it has is it has the first 15 Godzilla movies with some information about the development of each movie. So awesome collectors, if you're a Godzilla fan, you gotta have it. it. has the first 15 movies. And while I'm on the topic of movies, I'm gonna go over to this and then I'll go back to those books there. This is the rest of the Godzilla movies up until the Matthew Broderick Godzilla movie. So it's like the bridge between the first era of Godzilla until the modern era. So it has a lot of movies in this collection. And two volumes full of movies. And then I have this Godzilla board game, which I have not gotten to play yet. Just looks awesome though, just in the pieces that it comes inside of it. And then I have these Godzilla books. So these two books here, Godzilla 2000 and Godzilla Returns, these are actually part of a four book set. I do not own the other two books because the third and fourth book, the third book is like a couple hundred dollars and the fourth book is over a thousand dollars, at least from what I saw. I haven't looked too deeply into it, but I did not see anything relatively cheaply priced that was just affordable. Um, so I have not bought those. I'm pretty sure I owned one of these two when I was a kid and I just got rid of it because they, the, the covers look very familiar <clears throat> when I bought it. Godzilla statue. So let's get on to the actual math books because I think that's why everyone's here is to see some math books. So I want to start at the bottom of the bookshelf. So at the very bottom, I have these three workbooks. And let me just show you these three workbooks real quick. These are the three workbooks that I always recommend to my students before they take calculus and after they take calculus. So at the start of the calculus semester, I tell them, buy this book if you haven't taken trig in quite some time. So you get a lot of students who it's been a couple years or maybe they just need some strengthening of trig, because you gotta be pretty decent with trig in calculus, probably more than decent, and just some practice there. Then I tell them at the end of the semester, <clears throat> buy this calculus book if you plan on taking Calc 2 and moving on through the Calc sequence, especially if you're taking like a spring calculus class. You don't wanna just spit, sit around all summer for three months and then come in completely cold into Calc 2. You wanna just buy this book and work through it. I even work through it just for the fun of it. Uh, these books aren't anything too strenuous or anything. Look, it's not even not very thick books. Just good extra practice and good uh, skill strengthening exercises. And it has explanations for everything inside. And then it has exercises for each section. So awesome book. Definitely recommend to any student taking calculus. We have a multivariable calculus book here. Same, same author for all three of these. I do also have this self-study physics book I bought uh, maybe three years ago. I started working through it. I haven't gotten very far, only about maybe a third of the way through. I might just have to buy an actual physics textbook if I want to continue. And I do want to continue. I do want to learn some physics. I've never taken any physics classes. But this book isn't very great. The explanations aren't the best, and there really isn't a whole lot of exercises. So yeah, that's my self-study physics book. Going on to more math here, I have the Blitzer College Algebra book. This is the seventh edition. I do have the eighth edition right up here. Blitzer College Algebra eighth edition. And then I have the Business Calc uh, Bittinger book. This is the 11th edition. Then I have the 12th edition right here. So I'm kind of cheating with this bookshelf here at home because I have two, two copies of two books, different editions, but if you're teaching out of the same book for a while, you start to just accumulate some extra editions. Then I have this this awesome book, Mathematical Ideas. I, I want to show you this book. I have not taught out of this book. My coworker gave me this book because he literally had like five or six copies of it sitting in his office. I'm like, oh, can I have that? That looks super cool. So let's just, I'm going to show you this because this, this is, I, I really want to teach out of this book. Here's the contents. So in the contents, we have the art of problem solving, basic concept, concepts of set theory, introduction to logic, and then numeration systems, number theory, real numbers, basic concepts of algebra, graphs, functions, and systems of equations, geometry, 
counting methods. Then it gets into probability and statistics. It's just so interesting. Financial management, trigonometry, graph theory. So awesome that a book covers all of this information. It's like a highlight reel of math. And it's just, it's super fun. I imagine teaching out of this book would be super fun because it'd be just something different every single day and every single week you're doing like almost a whole new topic and it just, it would make for a lot of fun. I have sat down and worked through a lot of these chapter tests at the end of each chapter. There's a chapter test. I just gloss through each section and then I take the chapter test just for fun. And uh, I've probably gone through about maybe four of them so far. I, I want to take all of them. Just haven't had the time to work through the rest, but this book is... Super awesome. Hopefully I'll get to teach out of it someday or a book like it. I really like this book. Moving on, I have a differential equations book that I taught out of. Then these three books, in addition to these two books, I want to look at separately. But let me take these three out. So these three books, I picked up. Same thing with two of these books, but I'll do that separately. I picked these up at Half Price Books. I went to Half Price Books a couple weeks ago with the intention of buying some math books, and I was quickly overwhelmed with how many options there were for math books. So I bought this one because this is Calculus BC. This covers the uh, Calculus 2, so it's always good to just grab extra resources for Calc 2 and Calc in general. So I always just try to pick up cheap books to look for extra problems and explanations and everything. This book, it's a statistics book, but I 100% bought it purely because of the visual. I just think this visual is so sharp. This silver with the purple and blue, awesome, awesome. And I, I probably wouldn't have bought this book if it didn't look like this because I did pick up an older statistics book. I tried to just like grab old books, but this one just caught my eye and I had to have it. And I like statistics. This one I purely bought because it's probability. I love probability also. And this covers like everything for probability. It goes through so much probability. Let me go to the contents real quick here. It gives you just an introduction to probability and then it even just really, really in-depth stuff about uh, you get to a law of large number, expected value. And like, this is, like, we're, we're talking calculus, not just elementary statistics type of probability. Like, this is calculus, like, stuff that you would see in your uh, later years of your undergrad and even in some graduate level statistics classes, like, you would do some of this. So this this covers everything. Like, this is the, it says master math probability. Like, it's it covers a lot. And I haven't really gotten a chance to sit down and look through this book and work through some of the exercises. I'm really looking forward to it, though, but this one I, I absolutely had to have. So that was three of the five books I bought at Half Price Books. So while I'm talking about Half Price Books, I want to go to these two books real fast. So these I super luckily found. I was walking in with the intention on going to books like these three here that I showed you, more modern, just exercises and nothing really collectible about it, just interesting books. But I was walking through and I saw to my left a section that said collectibles and I thought it was just like of action figures, old comic books that they want to keep in special cases and Lord of the Rings collector books, you know, that kind of stuff. But I'm like, you know what, maybe, maybe they're talking about old math books. So I went over there and boom, here they were. I got super excited when I saw this book. This is Fundamentals of Algebra. I just want to show you something about this book real briefly. This book is from... 1944. Yeah, 1944. Awesome book. I assume a book like this was probably used in high school. It gives us a preface about the information about the book, but I would assume probably like eighth grade high school would use this book, statistics, and then linear equations. And then it even gets into trig ratios, which I thought was really, really different. <laughs> I would not expect to go from linear equations to trig ratios. So that was really cool. Yeah, okay, awesome book. I'll try to make a video purely about that book because I want to dive more into that, but I want to keep this video just strictly on the tour of the bookshelf. And this one was another in that collectible section. And the date on this one was, I think, 60-something. Yeah, 69 was the date on this one. What's interesting about this book, after flipping through it, is it's it's very modern. It's not a super old-looking book. Like, the presentation of everything doesn't look like it's, you know, from like another time period of when education was differently. Like it looks like something that we would see in a textbook today, like right here. It's opening up to a random page. This is the binomial distribution of the number of heads and three tosses for a coin. 
This is an example that I give when I start binomial distributions. I, I literally say, what if we are flipping a coin? I do two times. This exercise is doing three times. That's zero and then tails on tails and so on. I do two, two, uh, two flips of the coin though. Uh, but they do three, which is even more interesting. But yeah, I, I thought that was a, I was expecting it to not be something that would be relatable to, that would look like similar today, but this is a pretty modern old book. So moving on with the top shelf here, I have the Larson Calculus book. This is the actual book that I used when I took calculus, calculus one through three. And then Thomas Calculus, I picked this up at school, same coworker, getting rid of a bunch of books, had that, and he didn't want it anymore. So I was like, boom, take that. Sullivan Statistics, been teaching out of this book for as long as I've been teaching statistics. Couldn't imagine not teaching out of it. I love that book. Great book. I'm going to skip this section for a second. OpenStax, Calculus Volume 1, OpenStax, Calculus Volume 2. Have not completed the trifecta. I need Volume 3 right here on my bookshelf. That'd be awesome. But I have not taught Calc 3 out of this book. I have taught Calc 3 but out of the Larson book, not out of the OpenStax book. So I got to pick up that class at some point just to get <laughs> the third open sex book. I already talked about that, already talked about that. And then these three last books here, old calculus books, I think this one was from the 40s and then this one was from the 60s. But I want to wrap up this video with this piece of history. Look at this. Modern School Arithmetic, book three. Look at that cover. Looks like something out of Harry Potter. This book, I'll blow your mind here, let me show you. This book is from 1930. Now, I don't know if it was like a, a school edition book or something where they just gave it to the students year after year like we used to do. Because there's multiple names on here. I don't know if it's just within the family or just the school, like a library. Like, okay, your turn to have this book. Uh, but this book is awesome. And whoever owned it had a bunch of Mickey stamps that they just started stamping. Now I want to show you just who would have this book. Seventh graders would have this book and then even eighth graders. So it's like this type of book that they must have gave their students at the start and then they would just hold on to for a couple years, just like how we do with Calc. We have the same book for all three Calcs. But just real quick, I want to show the eighth grade contents here on this book. If you look, it says like banking, insurance, investments, taxation, just real life scenarios that uh, they just need to know when they finish up school because they might go to college, they might get a job right out of high school and they're gonna need to know how to do these things. So they prep them up in school and teach them about discounting interest, bearing notes, uh, compound interest tables, property insurance, fire insurance, life insurance, just all the life essentials, buying a house, mortgages, so cool, like this is not something, you might talk about this in some classes in a high school today, but definitely not an entire textbook worth, especially in a critical age of eighth grade. And then right at the start, they have that buying the house scenario. So awesome book, love to flip through this. Don't flip through it a whole lot though, because it is so old and I don't want the pages to get too damaged or anything like that, but it's just, I, I like just looking through it and just seeing how education was back then. Uh, yeah, so that was it's an awesome, cool old book. One of my favorites. If you like this content, please hit that subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching.